Dr. Tom Brannigan. Uh, today I'd like to do an examination of your legs, if that's okay. Uh, sure, Doctor, that's fine. Uh, what's your name? I'm Luke. Luke. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Uh, I need to lie down flat for this exam. Uh, sure. So, okay. Oh, right. And uh, I'm just going to stand at the end of the bed and have a look around. Uh, could you uncross your legs? Please? Sure. Thanks very much. First, remember the general observations that apply to any system. Apply these specifically to the neurological exam. Additional observations that are specific to the neurological examination can be summarised with the mnemonic cashier. C is for consciousness level. Is it normal or reduced? Use the Glasgow Coma Scale to report consciousness in a consistent way. A is for asymmetry. Look for symmetry of posture, any spasticity and muscle wasting. A patient can be symmetrically affected, so the presence of symmetry does not outrule any problems. S is for scars. Look particularly for neurosurgical and traumatic scars, but mention any that are visible. H is for hearing aids. I is for involuntary movements. E is for equipment, such as mobility aids, wheelchairs and assistive devices. R is for rash. Comment on any visible rashes. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just shake your legs back and forth. That just gives you an idea of the tone of your legs. All right, Jay. Tone is passive resistant to movement. Using both hands, roll the patient's leg back and forth on the bed a few inches and observe the movement of the leg and feet. Compare both legs. And I'm just going to lift them up and move them around a little bit as well. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is check the power in your legs. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to do a series of things. So the first is if you could push your knee up against my hand. Okay, and now on the other side as well. Power is tested for using a series of yeah, resisted movements. Over here. I push down against my it hand. is important at each step to know which okay. muscle groups are being tested for and their nerve roots. Okay, now can you push out against my hand? Okay, and put out against my hand on this side. All right, and can you push in against my hand? Okay, and can you push in against my hand? All right, so that's all the movements around your hip. I'm just going to do the same around your knee. So I'll get you to bend your knee this next bit. All right, now uh, can you push, uh, push your foot out against my hand down here? Okay, that's fine. We'll do the same on this side. You can push out against my hand down here. Okay, and now could you try and bring your heel in towards your uh, that's great. And we'll do it on this side as well. Bring your, try and bring your heel down. Okay, perfect. And then put your legs down flat. All right, so uh, can you push your foot against my hand, your toes against my hand? Perfect. And again on this side. Okay, and now can you push your toes against my head? Pull your toes up towards your head. Sometimes in the emergency room, a doctor will do an abbreviated power exam by asking the patient to squat and stand up, stand on their toes and then on their heels. Any student doing this in an assessment is very unlikely to even pass that assessment. Can you push in against it? Great. And I'll put my hand on the inside of the foot here. Can you push in against it? Perfect. Okay, that's great. So the next thing I'm going to do is check the reflexes in your leg. There's, uh, there's three of them. Um, I don't need you to go over the edge of the bed. I just need you to relax your legs fully. All right. Ensure that the limb being tested is fully relaxed before attempting to elicit reflexes. The three reflexes of the upper limb are the patellar or knee jerk, the Achilles or ankle jerk, and the Babinski or plantar reflex. When checking the patellar reflex, observe the quadriceps muscles for a flicker of movement. So now I'm going to put uh, the heel of this leg onto the shin of this leg. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but try and find a spot that's comfy for you. When checking right. the Achilles reflex, yeah. observe gastrocnemius for a flicker of movement. Great. And then I guess you put the, uh, the same thing with the other okay. leg on top of that shin. And again, okay. And fully relax this leg. Is it, is it relaxed there? It and is. that can be a bit uncomfortable in this position sometimes. Okay. If you have difficulty eliciting a reflex, ensure that the patient is fully relaxed, reposition yourself and try again. Okay, so I'm gonna get you to do that maneuver again where you pull out. 
If you are still unable to elicit the reflex, employ a reinforcement maneuver and try one more time. Report your findings at the end of this. Okay, so on three. One, two, three. Okay, that's fine. All right, so for the final reflex, uh, I'm just going to rub that on the sole of your foot. It is a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I'm just going to rub it up the sole of your foot up to the top, so you're, 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 most people have a bit of a response to it, so I'll be gentle enough with it. Okay. When checking the plantar reflex, look at the big toe. The normal response is flexion of the big toe at the metatarsophalangeal joint. If there is extension of the big toe and fanning of the other toes, this is reported as upgoing planters or a positive Babinski and is an abnormal response associated with an upper motor neuron lesion. I'm just going to check the coordination then around the legs. So testing for coordination in the lower limbs is done using three tests. Where a deficiency is noted, it represents a lesion on the same side as the deficiency. And then down again. Yeah, that's fine. And if you do the same, that heel onto that shin. That's perfect. Okay. So for the next thing I get you to do is uh, if you could if you could tap your foot off my hand on this side as fast as you can. Okay, that's fine. And I guess you do it again on this side. So just tap quickly. Okay, that's fine. And uh, the last coordination test is if you could try and touch this your big toe to my finger if you're able to see it. Okay. And then we'll go once more here. Okay. Just do it once more with this. Okay, and then put it on. Okay, great. That's perfect. Then we move on to sensation now. So for sensation, um, we test two th we, we test two forms of sensation, your light sensation and also your sharp sensation. So for the light sensation I'm gonna use this uh, tip of a cotton bud. Can you feel that there? I can. And how does it feel? Feels soft. Feel soft, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna touch that along your legs. I want you to close your eyes but say yes when you feel it. And I also want you to tell me if it feels the same on the left and on the right. Okay. Okay. Test for light sensation of each yes. dermatome bilaterally. Yes. After every two to three yes. dermatomes, ask again if the left yes. and the right feel the same. Yes. If sensory loss is detected, spend more yes. time around that dermatome to define yes. its borders. Yes. Temperature testing is a more yes. sensitive test of the spinothalamic yes. pathway, but in practice is yes. only done in special okay. circumstances. Okay. I'm going to do the same again, uh, only I'm going to use the other side. So I'll just touch it here so you know what you're dealing with. How does that feel? That feels a bit sharp. A bit sharp. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to touch that around again okay. as well. So just same again, eyes closed and just say uh, yes when you can feel it. Test for sharp sensation of each dermatome bilaterally. After every two to three dermatomes, yes. ask again if the left and the right feel the same. Yes. If sensory loss is detected, yes. spend more time around that dermatome to define its borders. Yes. 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 Okay. And does it feel the same on the left and the right? They did. They felt the same. same. Okay. Uh, I'm going to check now for your vibration sensation. We do that Test for the vibration chest. sensation using a 128 hertz tuning fork. Your chest. Okay. Can you feel that there? I can. What does it feel like? I can feel it vibrating. Okay. And can you tell that it stopped there? Yeah, it stopped there. Okay. So I'm going to do that same thing, but just uh, on the on the bone down on, on your foot uh, next to your big toe. Okay. All right. So you just tell me uh, when you feel the vibration and then also when it stops. Okay. After testing for vibration sensation at the sternum, place yes. the vibrating tuning fork on the bone of one of the distal interphalangeal joints. Okay. And then we'll do the other. If the patient does not feel the vibration, move to a more proximal bony prominence, such as the metatarsal phalangeal joints, the medial malleolus, or the knee. Is, uh, I want to see if you can tell the orientation of your, of, uh, your toes in space, so it's called proprioception. To test proprioception, take the distal interphalangeal joint of one of the patient's toes. Hold the side of the toe and move it up and down, asking the patient to tell you whether you stop with it pointing upwards or downwards. Tell me whether it's up or down. Test for proprioception on the right and the left side. Up. Down. Up. Okay. And we'll do the same on the other side. So I'll just isolate this toe again. And up versus down. So just let me know. What's this? Up. Down. Down. Up. Okay. Perfect. Okay, well that's everything, Luke. Thanks very much. Thank you, Doctor.